All right, everyone, welcome to the Finance Committee meeting. I will call the meeting to order at 7.02 on September 28th. Uh, so welcome. We have uh, our four Finance Committee members, in addition to Peter Cruz, the town administrator. And um, so it's OK. Let's get started. Uh, so following the agenda, I don't have any announcements. Um, so I think the first order of business on the agenda is to elect officers for the coming year for the finance committee. Um, I know we have um, a couple of new members. We have three positions and a committee uh, assignment to hopefully address. So we, we have chair, we have a vice chair, we have a secretary, and we have a member of the capital planning committee. So at the moment, I am the vice chair and the acting chair because uh, Aubrey's moved on. Claudette has been the secretary for the last year, and we don't currently have a member of the capital planning committee. So we've been delinquent in that since last fall when the member we had at the time um, resigned. So the way we typically do this is we'll start with um, electing a chair, and then that person will take over and we'll move through the other positions as well. And then once we've done this, um, we can move and talk a little bit about budgeting season. And um, I asked, invited Peter to join us just to give us an update on how things are going. Um, okay. Can I start? Yeah. So, um, again, the way this works for the position is someone nominates, someone seconds for any number of people. Um, we have a discussion and then we have a vote. Um, I guess just does anyone have any before we get started has anyone thought about the position that they i mean we have four nominally four positions we have four people in the room here um excluding uh mr caruso who's not eligible so um <laughs> hoping that we can we can fill all the positions um so i'll be honest i don't know what the different positions really entail um yep. to be honest so i i I can't tell you if I'd want. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe I'll just spend a few minutes and talk about the, the positions. Um, Great. Thank so, you, Gary. What's that? Yes, thank you, Gary. That would be great. Oh, yeah, okay, sure, sure. So uh, starting with the chair, the chair will hold the, obviously, we'll run the meetings. The chair spends some amount of time outside of the meetings aligning with the, typically with the, the chairperson of the Board of Selectmen and with Peter. So, you know, we're not allowed to deliberate amongst our body outside of the meetings, but in those conversations around uh, town events and town issues um, where notifications need to happen, the chairperson becomes essentially the point of contact. Um, and then just overall provides kind of guidance and, and leadership. I mean, I think that's in a nutshell. Uh, it's not really any more specific um, than that. Gary, if Vice I could. Just the other thing is the chair also is the one who does the agenda. You you control the, the chair controls the agenda. Yeah, so the, the chair sets the agenda, uh, works to schedule the meetings and, and coordinates with the um, uh, the town secretary to make sure that the agenda has been posted ahead of time. So that's a it's a detail, but it's really in terms of setting up the meetings, that's a responsibility as well. Um, the vice chair is really there to fill in for the chair, um, to help the chair as needed or to fill in if the chair is not available. So there's no extra duties or explicit duties that are assigned to the vice chair beyond that. The secretary, Claudette, maybe you should, you could uh, share what the responsibilities are of the secretary. I've never been secretary, so. Secretary, you would, you would take minutes, which we have videos, so we don't even take the minutes or, you know, vote to accept minutes, right, as a secretary with the meetings. Um, or. I don't know if you would send communication to the board if we needed to, but I think the chair really does that. So I haven't done any of that piece of it. Uh, okay, so nominally, yeah, nominally the secretary um, historically has taken meeting minutes and we sign off on those for, um, for all meetings. I'm not totally familiar with how the rules have changed with regards to these COVID times in Zoom. Um, so we probably should have that discussion 
maybe um, offline. But anyways, we, we have an obligation to record, have some sort of a recording of minutes for every meeting for um, uh, open meeting law. And uh, it's the secretary's responsibility to, to do that. Peter, and that's it. Can I ask you the question? Sure. So are we supposed to have minutes that we vote on and accept and sign? Yes, uh, you should be doing that. That's right. Somebody should be recording the minutes. The committee would review them and uh, approve them and submit them to the town clerk. She keeps them on file. She also typically posts them on that page on the town's website. For the final yeah, time. so we had been doing that up uh, certainly up through the spring, as I recall. Um, again, we'll have to discuss mm -hmm. what we yep. can do to reconstruct those. Okay. Um, Maybe they'd just be a little more high level or like action items. Because if we have a recording, you know. Yeah, you can go back and recordings and, and right. Yeah, we, we may need to go back and do a little review. Yeah. Um, again, the, the Board of Selectmen has a, they have someone that actually does it for them. Mm -hmm. um, I had that on a list of an agenda topic to talk about possibly at the next meeting, getting caught up in terms of signing those. So um, yeah, let's let's talk about what we need to sort of recreate that. You know, we could possibly split it up. We haven't really had a lot of meetings. We haven't, we've met very infrequently. So there's, there's not actually that much to catch up on. No, because I um, on my agenda. So that's, yeah, that's the secretary. And then the final position is to be a representative of the capital planning committee. So the capital planning committee the responsibility is for recommending um, plans for capital equipment. Um, they are responsible for voting on approving expenditures over a certain amount. I think it's $10,000 for, for those types of uh, expenditures. And so they, you know, they're working on a capital plan for the town. They're currently looking at the, what to do about the, uh, the current town hall situation. So the old town hall, our temporary current town hall. So it does a big project for them. And more recently, they've made recommendations with regards to equipment purchases for highway, for example. So by, um, uh, by town bylaw, that committee has someone from the Board of Selectmen, it has someone from uh, the Finance Committee, and then it has, um, well, is it the town administrator explicitly, or are you representing the Board yes, of Selectmen? No, yes, no, I'm on there explicitly. Um, and I actually am the chair now, thanks to yeah, all my right. fellow members. I'm real appreciative. Um, you know, also a member of the planning board. We are we okay. currently lack one. And there are then three ad hoc members uh, appointed by the moderator from the general population. And so your representative would be one of seven members. All members are voting. And yes, exactly as Gary described, uh, the, under the bylaws, the Capital Planning Committee, um, uh, reviews and it reviews and makes recommendations for capital acquisitions. Capital items are defined as anything over ten thousand dollars and uh, five year useful life or more. Uh, also, roadway types of uh, spending and also all movements of stabilization funds. So um, you'll see on the you know town meeting warrants, the selectmen vote is shown, the finance committee's vote is shown, and the capital committee's vote is shown, and all capital items and uh, stabilization transfers. And how often do you guys generally meet these days, Peter? Oh, well, well, we haven't met in some time because we haven't had a lot uh, to deal with right now. And we're down to four members. So once we start membering up and we'll start meeting as we get into the, you know, sort of the late, the early winter and then through the budget season and town meeting season, we'll meet, you know, for a while there, we met every two or three weeks. Uh, I don't know that we'll need to do that. And uh, especially where, and you know, I'll, I won't jump ahead. I'll, I'll save uh, just a discussion of special town meeting and how we're dealing with capital items in the short term. So any questions from anyone on any of the positions? And, and Gary, if I'm sorry, but I, I, this capital committee representative of the finance committee can be any one of the officers as well. It doesn't have to be separate yes, from the sure. officers. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Any questions? No. Um, okay, so. So do we just start? Yeah, we can just start. Um, if anyone wants to make a nomination for the chair. Okay. 
So I, I will make a nomination to have Gary as the chair. I would second that. Okay. Um, anyone else interested? I, I, I'll say a few things about this. Um, I'll accept, but it's conditional. Uh, well, okay, so I'll just go ahead and say. So as I think as everyone knows, my wife is the chair of the Board of Selectmen. And um, I understand that we have two people that are brand new. Um, Claudette's not been on the committee for very long. I've been this, I think this will be my fifth year. So from that standpoint, I'm willing to accept, but um, I, I won't be willing to accept again. I think on multiple levels, on one level, I think it's a lot for one family to be responsible for so much or in that much of a leadership position. Um, we both have new jobs. We, you know, we're both at startups, quite busy. I'm in a hotel room in DC right now. Um, so I think it's a lot to ask of anyone family, but I also think that it's, it's viewed negatively by some in town, even from a perception basis that one family is, um, I don't know, too actively involved. Too, I don't know how exactly to phrase it, but I've heard negative comments. And um, so there's a perception issue there as well. So I'm not sure that it's totally healthy for the town as well to have two people from the same family in these two leadership roles. Uh, that being said, um, we are where we are. So I'm willing to accept it, you know, to get through this budget season, but I, I, won't, I won't be willing to do it again in the spring. I don't know how anyone else feels, but I mean, I'd be more than happy to kind of learn the ropes to help you kind of, you know, move out of there. I definitely understand. I just don't want to jump in with both feet when I don't really know what I'm doing yet. Well, um, I understand. Yeah. Okay. But I definitely get that it can be a lot. And I never really thought of that perception either from the both of you being in kind of big roles. So yeah. I get it. Yeah. Thank you. Unfortunately, I've, I've heard it, and I, I at some level I even understand it. So, no, I, um, I agree with so, you. Oh, sorry, Claudia. I feel the same way. I haven't been on the committee for a year, but it's really not a year. You know what I mean? Like we have. Yeah, right. So that's where where I feel more comfortable with you being the chair. And I feel mm -hmm. anybody's negative about it, and I know I'm on TV, then they can step up to the plate mm -hmm. the committee and be the chair. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we have another. Okay. I do yeah, want to I, your point too for your family. So it is a lot, and I really didn't look at it that way either. I guess so. If you do accept it, that would be we would be appreciate. I would be appreciative of it. Yeah, we all appreciate that, Gary. I would endorse <laughs> that, and I would say the the benefits far outweigh the concerns. Um, okay. And um, um, yes, I'm I'm also only five six meetings into this okay. adventure. So I, yeah, I would I would I would appreciate if you support us as uh, the chair for the time being, and then we can revisit next year. Okay. Okay. Uh, I guess then everyone's spoken, so uh, I'll call for a vote. Um, all those in favor of uh, Gary being appointed, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say nay. Okay, the ayes have it. Okay. Um, so we'll just continue then and move on to the, um, the co-chair. So uh, I think in terms of being the chair next year, it could be anyone. You know, it doesn't need to be whoever we elect as co-chair right now. Um, or it could be, you know, it really just depends on how people are feeling in the spring and who has the interest of sort of taking over that role. In the short term, the responsibility of the co-chair would be to fill in at, at a meeting if I'm not able to. And Gary, um, and just course, if, I, if I could, you're saying co-chair, but you really mean vice chair, correct? Sorry, vice chair. Yep. Important distinction. Sorry, not being precise. Uh, the vice chair. So it's really a backup position for the, for the chair. So if something happens to me or if I can't make a meeting, this person would fill in. Um, is, anyone, is there anyone who, you know, it's always a little weird because we have to sort of coldly nominate people. So I, I don't know if anyone has an interest in taking that position. I wouldn't mind doing that position. That's fine with me, yeah. So okay. Sure. All right, Claudia. <laughs> Can I go? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I thought you were about to say something. Okay, so I move to make Sierra the vice chair. Okay, I second. From you for, you know, this current year and 
let us all learn really right yeah. right right and help each other okay. out. uh hell okay you're you're muted there i'm not sure if you're trying to say something but um. yeah i want to second it but you already did okay, okay. so uh all those in favor to me to elect sierra as the vice chair of the finance committee please say aye 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 okay so the ayes have it and um the last position is the secretary uh, again I, I don't know find it if you're if you're comfortable sort of continuing that role or if you'd like to pass it off to helge i'll do it if you want me to do it um i'll do it right this time though <laughs> um I, I take notes for a couple other things that i'm on you know um so okay. i know what i'm doing okay i really thought that being on zoom we were good yeah yeah. We'll we'll figure it out to make sure we get it. We get All covered. right. Um, so I'll nominate Claudette to be the secretary for the finance committee. Okay, I'll get seconds, Sarah. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. All right. So that leaves the um, uh, capital planning. Um, the capital planning representative. Uh, so I kind of volunteer for that. That would be great. It'd be awesome okay, if, you, if you could take on the responsibility. We greatly appreciate it. Um, so, so yeah. oh, okay. So I I, I nominate uh, Helgi for the, the position of uh, finance committee representative on the capital mm -hmm. planning committee, no, no, the capital program committee, as it may be called. I second. Okay, second. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, and so the eyes have it. All right, excellent, Peter. You have a new member on your committee, um, so I, I, I'm That's confident awesome. that we'll be confident that we'll be well represented going forward. Terrific. That's great. Thanks for stepping up, Helg. All right. So with that done, um, I guess quickly let's just talk about what we have coming up. So coming into the fall, the budget season is getting close to beginning. So. For those who haven't um, been involved in this previously, the way this works is that Peter leads the Peter leads the effort as a town administrator, and he really kicks things off by initiating conversations with the department heads, providing guidance in terms of where we need to be in terms of um, in terms of raises, in terms of overall budgeting. He's got the best visibility in terms of uh, the things that are coming up. Uh, he's in conversations, obviously, with the schools and with the various committees. So he kicks everything off and provides the initial guidance. And mm -hmm. um, he'll have a due date early in the, in the new year, I believe. And he'll provide some more specifics on that. And then once that information starts coming into him, and he'll start discussing it with the Board of Selectmen is when things really start kicking off for us as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll get some initial numbers. The Board of Selectmen will vote on it. and We'll vote on our version as well. During that process, probably starting in, in February, we will likely invite in um, uh, leadership from the town to talk about the various uh, major line items of the budget. So the police chief, the fire chief, for example, probably highway. Again, just to get an update, to under listen to how they approach the budget, what their needs are, which needs are met, which are unmet. And um, we'll also go through the initial feedback to come in from the department heads, and we can identify um, any others that we explicitly want to talk to because something catches our attention or just because we're curious. So that'll be the approach. So the, our meetings will accelerate as we get into the spring. Um, in the February and then March through April, we'll be meeting quite frequently as we get ready for the town meeting. Um, so at the moment, there's nothing explicitly that we need to do. Uh, and I think, Peter, if you want to take over now, you can maybe give your update on how the process you expected to go this year and then and then go into your general update. Sure. <clears throat> so typically, as Gary said, I do a, um, a, a guidance memo and I can share guidance memos from years past that I've done. And before I do that, I generally try to get, uh, uh, you know, agreement with the basic uh, tenets of the guidance memo from the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee. That way, both are aligned and supportive of uh, how I've structured what I do. And I, and I try to keep things within, you know, proposition two and a half limitations. 
um, my ballpark, you know, where folks can be. And from that, you know, folks are either, I, you know, come up with recommendations, as Gary said, on uh, salary increases uh, for uh, non-union personnel, as well as overall increases uh, uh, for certain departmental budgets. Uh, and one of the, you know, one of the, we have the public safety ones are pretty big, highways pretty big. Um, and of course, the schools as a whole, as well as individual school districts, uh, will be the you know the major challenges that we'll all face uh, together on this. And as in the process, you're you're deep in the process, as Gary says. You meet with department heads that you think are important to meet with, depending on how things are how things come in. And in the guidance memo, I asked department heads to submit their budgets. They submit it on a you know, forms supplied by the town accountant goes into a model. The town accountant compiles all that. Uh, I review it and then I make my <clears throat> sort of there's under the bylaws, the town administrator makes the recommendations to the board of selectmen. And simultaneous with that, I share it with the finance committee. And, uh, you know, hopefully in the last budget cycle, both groups were all on the same page and the prior cycle might have been some differences, but uh, generally get to the right spot. So. Uh, we and the department heads are generally pretty good about uh, following the guidance. Uh, we also try to factor in for certain things that we know might be outside the normal guidance. So, for example, uh, one of the guidance memos I put out in a year or two past, I recommended that the planning department upgrade their budget for staffing personnel, and that was included in the overall amounts that we were going to allow and still stay within Proposition Two and a Half in our revenue projection. So that process will, will go forward. I can also give you updates. Uh, you, The Board of Selectmen will likely invite you uh, after their next meeting coming up Monday night uh, to their October 17th meeting. Um, so pencil that in on your calendars. Hopefully one or more or some of you, even a quorum can attend uh, just to get folks uh, talking about the future here. Um, we would hope to have Q1, we'll have Q1 results in from the town accountant um, and I would hope to have the town accountant and the treasurer. We have a new treasurer, Jane Snellman, at that meeting as well. So everybody can uh, talk sort of numbers and so forth. Um, at the last meeting mon this past Monday night, the Board of Selectmen currently, uh, and it was my recommendation as well, uh, decided that there's no uh, need for a special town meeting or fall town meeting. Um, you know, the consensus of the popular, you know, Jen, Mrs. Gill, Chairman, Chair Gill did a uh, survey amongst the population and the bulk of the respondents uh, felt that a special town meeting um, should really deal with emergency items and uh, including perhaps, uh, you know, urgent capital items, let's just say, and try to avoid dealing with, uh, for example, um, bylaw changes and things like that. Uh, the other thing that might be included in a, a special town meeting or fall town meeting is supplements to already um, bud budgeted amounts that uh, appear to be stressful. And there was some thought at last year's special town meeting planning that we might have had some stress in a couple of budget line items. But in the end, we managed to muddle through to the end of the year. Um, and muddling through isn't the right word. We managed to manage to get to the end of the year. Um, so I, I don't foresee any major budget challenges as, uh, in this fiscal 23. Uh, I know that we did, um, you, may, you may be aware uh, that we have some challenges in police recru recruiting and retention. And so the board approved uh, a couple of things for recruitment and retention, some portion of which was increases uh, and really a supplement to the already uh, uh, agreed upon union contract where we supplemented the rates of pay and we supplemented some other parts of that, including the, uh, the Quinn equivalent uh, payment of uh, uh, rates for education. Um, and so we, we, we basically uh, made the, the, the contract more competitive compared to other towns. Separately uh, funded through ARPA, uh, we put in some bonuses for certain educational types of things and so forth. So, so the the part that's not funded by ARPA is planned to be funded through the existing budget. And the reason we think we can do that is because we have vacancies and or open positions that are budgeted. 
and the funding for those positions will basically cover the additional costs. So that's where we're at looking forward to uh, this fiscal year. Um, separately, in terms of should an item come up for a capital requirement, for example, one that's 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 out there that I don't have uh, information yet from the librarian, but you know they they've had a need for a furnace for uh, several cycles now, and they're coming forward with that again, though they they're waiting on quotes. Likely that will be anything like that would would presumably be funded using ARPA funds, and it's the board selectmen who are the uh, approvers of spending or commitments of ARPA funds. So. Um, Basically, the thing is we will not have a need for a special town meeting for any capital items needed by any departments uh, in the uh, immediate future. On sure. ARPA, okay, if you have any questions at any time, just pop in. On ARPA, we've uh, spent and or committed about 350000 of the 950 that's uh, due the town. Um, we um, leaving about six hundred grand left to commit to. Um, if you will, before uh, 12, 31, 24. Um, and we've received all but 316,000 of the 950 from the feds through the state. Uh, the, the remaining piece I was hoping to say to you, it's in the bank already. It, it's coming in the bank any day now because it has been distributed by the feds to the state. So that's coming to us. So we'll have had all the ARPA money in the bank and like I say, we've spent we spent about 180, and we've got commitments to about 170 of that right now. And by commitments, I mean approvals by the board of selectmen. We may not spend some of those things. As an example, uh, there's 10 grand in what I call committed or authorized for our share of the purchase of a van for the senior center under a grant that they've applied for, but they have yet to receive word whether they're getting it. If they don't get it that money isn't spent and can be repurposed, okay? So that that's where that is. Uh, really glad you've got a capital planning, capital program committee member from your committee, and uh, we'll, we'll bring you up to speed. I think you'll find it's a great way to add value and also know even more what's going on in town and what the challenges are. Like I said, we have Jane Snellman, the new treasurer collector. She's really uh, dug in and doing a lot of work, uh, catching up on things. And so I think uh, between her and uh, Tara, who's remaining is our uh, town accountant, but we do have a posting for the town accountant position. So should you come across somebody with skills and uh, an interest in the town, we'd, we'd welcome speaking to somebody. But Tara will continue. Uh, she does it on a 1099 basis, uh, uh, you know, off hours for us. So it's not the most efficient and effective way of doing things, but she does a great job. And the, 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 she's been active with our auditors. Uh, the FY21 audit is underway. Uh, schedules have been requested and supplied. Uh, questions and field work are about to begin. Um, and Tara and Jane uh, have been active, as well as our former treasurer collector, Sam, who's remaining as a resource for us. Uh, closing FY22 and closing the books, doing the bank recs, capturing all the revenue, things that were challenging for us and as a result resulted in uh, some delays in free cash. We don't anticipate any delays in free cash for the upcoming Springtown meeting. Um, last Peter, one, sorry, Peter, to, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but go, I, go I have to ask, what is your target this year for the free cash? Well, I'm going I'm to target end of February, if not sooner, but I think I'll be comfortable with end of February, right? I don't want to push too hard on that one. Okay. Um, the, the last thing under my update here, uh, I would say that the school capital project uh, will continue to uh, evolve, but uh, the capital committee has a representative who's also our secretary, uh, does a great job. He he attends some of the subcommittee meetings dealing with the school committee capital items, and uh, the cap the really is the school project. And so they had a, a site visit by Mass School Building Authority representatives just a week or so ago. Chairman Gill attended that meeting, um, and they had nothing definitive, but they you know it's in the process or the pipeline and the steps. None of the steps are indicating no. So sometime, I think what I understand is by the end of the year, uh, word should come through to 
uh, the school district whether or not MSBA will be willing to participate in the plan. And then as a result, there'll be 270 days time clock starts to have a town meeting where voters approve for a feasibility study for a project. And the latest word I had is the, the amount of that, you know, initially was half a million was an estimate of the cost then somewhere 750, 800. Now it could be in excess of a million, it could be a million to 2 million for the cost of a feasibility study. I don't have enough details about that, but I think that's a fair game for uh, hard questions about as mm -hmm. that process continues. And I hope you all would be asking hard questions too. Yeah. Um, the other piece is that one of the things that for me was very attractive that I learned differently about today uh, of their project was that we were likely to be getting uh, MES back to the town. They were in their plan that they had presented over a couple of uh, very substantial meetings to large groups of folks. Um, they were gonna go to two facilities, the, uh, the middle school and the high school for all of the students. I heard this morning from Steve, the representative from the capital committee that um, they were talking that they're, they wanna retain MES. So that, that for me was kind of a disappointment because I, I liked the idea of the possibilities of getting back MES that, you know, sort of an offset to, you know, it's an offline offset to the true cost. So anyway, uh, more to follow on that and plenty of questions to follow on. The last thing I would say is I would, I would suggest your committee consider having liaisons to some of the major departments where one or more of you, you know, meet, you know, outside of the meeting time. It's your call how you want to do it. But I know that, for example, uh, take a public safety chief of one sort or another, they would welcome trying to educate a liaison from the finance committee outside of a public meeting. Um, and then further as you, you know, you'll have that person at the meeting as well. So just a suggestion, and I'm happy to talk more about that. I do know that on our capital committee meeting, capital committee, uh, we do have liaisons, liaisons to various groups. So I have a we have a lia liaison to the schools. We have a liaison about the town buildings. We have a liaison for public safety and that sort of thing. And we think that helps leverage, you know, uh, knowledge, if you will, leverage greater knowledge into greater knowledge. So, yeah, it's worth it's worth discussing. Considering we we did something along these lines, but informally, um, back when I first started on the committee because we had a total change in the committee. And so we we had, we had kind of split it up in terms of engaging with the school, with highway and with public safety. And um, yeah, it's worth considering that conversation. Basically just to sit down and meet with, with uh, stakeholders offline and individually and, and have conversations of needs and possibilities. Um, not to be, not, you know, no deliberation obviously takes place, but in a less formal environment and then to sort of set the stage for more discussions within our committee um, at a later date in our public meetings. So let's um, let's think about that and maybe discuss that at our next meeting. Great. That's all I had, Gary. Okay. Um, I don't have anything else. Was there anything from any of the committee members that you wanted to bring up? No. No? Okay. So, sorry, my laptop's giving me a hard time all of a sudden. Um, the only, I guess the last item would be a next meeting. Um, so Peter just mentioned the 17th uh, for a joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen. So the way that would work is I'll survey the committee going into that meeting. And if we were able to get three people, I'll formally schedule a um, a coinciding finance committee meeting to happen at the same time as the board of selectmen meeting and we'll actually call it the order during the meeting if there's only one or two of us then we won't need to do that um today's the 28th i don't expect that we're going to have much on the agenda this month so i think what i would propose is that we pencil in the 17th and then uh, if people can make it great if not then then that's okay as well and then maybe shoot for either the 26th or the 27th, those when, that Wednesday or Thursday, um, to get together. So roughly a month from now. So 
Are you saying the 17th and the 26th or the 27th or? I would, I would. So the 17th, we would get together with the Board of Selectmen, but we wouldn't have an independent meeting. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, depending on how many people we have there, if we have don't have a quorum, then we'll just be listening. If we have a quorum, then we can more actively participate in the meeting. Um, but regardless, I think that uh, we should plan on a full meeting of our own in October. And to me, the 12th feels like it's a little too soon. So we don't have to, I guess in general, since all four of us are here, do you have a, I'll, of course we'll touch base with everyone ahead of the meeting, but do you have a preference for, for days for versus Wednesday versus Thursday? Uh, Tuesdays are tough for me personally. And I can't remember Claudia Mondays where I forget which day you had. Tuesdays are no good for me, but I could do the 26th or the 27th. Okay. Elgay, do you have a preference for Wednesday versus Thursday? Uh, we lose you there. Okay. Well, I'll tentatively expect that it'll be one of those two days, and uh, I'll follow up with you guys the week before, probably to confirm. Okay. And I'll reach out ahead of time on the 17th as well, once we have the actual invitation from the board selecting, and we can uh, figure out how many people are going to be there. Okay. So if there's nothing else, then um, if I could have a motion to adjourn. No motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, so the finance committee meeting is adjourned at seven thirty-eight on September twenty-eighth. Thank you, everyone. Thank we'll you, be Peter. talking to you soon. Thank you, Peter, for coming. Thank you all. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, night. Alex. Good night. Bye bye.